Sirach chapter 19, verse 5. Whoso taketh pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned, but he that resists pleasures crown his life. I want to give our praises and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kodash, forgive me the spirit, to do this lesson. In this lesson, I'm going into think about your kingdom seat and resist your pleasures. Okay. Think about your kingdom seat and resist pleasures. Okay. Resist wicked pleasures. Okay. Now we understand in this truth that there's a battle, a serious war going on within ourselves. Okay. With our flesh and our spirit. But every time that you get tempted to think about wicked things or do wicked things or wicked pleasures that are not right, that you know ain't right. Think about your kingdom seat. Is it really worth it? Because when you really think about it, you like, hell no. You know, now we understand your body wants to do something different. Right. To go contrary to what's right. And we got to fight that. It talks about the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we understand that that is a real thing. That's no joke. But during that moment of weakness or you feel yourself getting weak, really try to think about your kingdom seat, man, and what comes with that kingdom seat. It does not compare to that moment of whatever pleasure you're trying to get into. That's not right. OK. Let's read it again. Sirach chapter 19, verse five. Whoso take pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned. But he that resists pleasures crown his life. OK. And also in the first part of that scripture, when it says whoso take pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned. OK. We understand that we go off and we fall. But that's why the Lord say he is nigh unto the contrite. To the regretful, meaning you understand you messed up. You did something that wasn't right. And you're sorry for it. Sincerely. And you don't want to do it. You know, like Paul talked about, he do things he don't want to do because of the sin that dwelleth in our flesh. OK. But he that resists pleasures crown his life. Right. It's about that kingdom. OK. Your rulership that's coming. The kingdom of heaven. Let's go to Lamentations chapter three. I read verse 22 and 23. It says it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Right. And you know his compassion is not filling because we're still here and we still believe. OK, we still believe in his truth. Sincerely, those who believe all you brothers out there, you few sisters. OK. But we also understand that we fall. Right. We also understand that if he were to take our falls and really look at them and, and you know, and make us accountable in real time, we would all be dead, period. All right. So right there, we understand that his compassions fail not. OK, it fail not. Remember that, man. All right. Remember that every morning the mercy is renewed. So don't think about yesterday. Work on doing better today. I always say one day at a time, the evil is sufficient enough in one day. OK, so if that mercy is being rolled out, then what do we need to do? Think more about the kingdom. Have that vision in our spirit, man, because with that vision comes meditation and with that meditation comes concentration. OK, and with that concentration, it makes you more on fire. Your eye is single, so your whole body will be full of what? Full of light, full of wisdom. OK, to guide you to that kingdom, to that kingdom seat. All right. Let's go to wisdom of Solomon, chapter one. I started verse one. Love righteousness, you that be judges of the earth. Think of the Lord with a good heart, with a good mind and in simplicity of heart. Seek him for he will be found of them that tempt him not and show of himself unto such as do not distrust him. Right, man. OK, the Lord is big about trust, very big. That's why when you read about the wilderness, there was a lot of distrust going on. And what happened? They went in circles and circles and circles because of lack of faith, lack of belief and no trust. 
Okay, so we have to trust the Lord and have faith that we can do what? We can call upon Yahweh Bashem Shai in faith to give us the strength to resist these temptations. Okay, that we have in trouble with. Okay, so that we can be more kingdom minded. Period. That takes faith as well, man. When you fall, you're like, shit. You know, you keep getting hit by the same punch. You're like, damn. Well, you got to have faith that you won't get hit by the same punch like before. Okay? Make your request known. Call upon your how about your mouth shy. Communicate with your power. All right? Verse 3. For forward thoughts separate from your how about your mouth shy. And his power, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. And that's why we have to focus on resisting. OK, which goes into the fear of the Lord at the end of the day. OK, it talks about uh, where the fear of the Lord is present. It driveth away sins. I think that's Sirach chapter one, verse 20 or verse 21 in that chapter. OK, where the fear of the Lord is present, it driveth away sins. OK, let's read verse four again for into a malicious soul. Wisdom shall not enter, meaning all you doing is sinning. OK, most of your time is sinning than doing right. OK, malicious, you're not even acknowledging your faults. You're not even calling upon the Lord to ask for the strength. You're not confessing your faults to your how about because it says he is faithful to forgive if we confess our faults and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, you're not even going that direction. OK, so if you have that mind, then you are malicious. So for into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. So guess what? If wisdom won't enter and that's the light, what's going to be there? Darkness. That's why it says take heed that you don't have darkness within you. Take heed, man. Examine. OK. It says, nor dwell in a body that is subject unto sin for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. Now, check that out. Holy Spirit of discipline. OK, the fear of the Lord hear the conclusion of the whole matter. All right. So when you think about that seat, man, and you think about that wicked pleasure that you're thinking about. You like, hold up, man, do <laughs> Come on now. It's not even close. All right. You talking about a kingdom seat forever, being a ruler for eternity. Being immortal for eternity, never dying for eternity. OK, what current pleasure that you can, you know, whip up in your mind? That's not right. What current pleasure can you compare to that? It's not even close. So it really makes you feel like shit when you think about it. You should feel contrary. You should be like, shit, what the hell's wrong with me? Okay, because we got the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. All right, we can read and see that the kingdom is going to be amazing forever. And it's bigger than what we read, man. The Lord got some surprises for us. He ain't got everything written. Just like Yahweh's miracles, all his miracles weren't written. All right. And it said it, the miracles he did was so much that the books, it could, man, it would fill up the world, man. It's too many miracles that he did that wasn't written about. OK, so how much more the kingdom of heaven on how great it's going to be that is not written about? Come on now. OK, so when you think about that and you think about your current bullshit pleasure, all right, that Satan is trying to entice you in, it is not worth it, man. I'm going to say it again. Think about your kingdom seat. Think about living forever, man. That's what you're fighting for. That's what Satan wants to take from you. That's why he wants to suck you into those different things. Get your conscience all messed up for, you know, you ain't got no faith. You ain't got no confidence. OK, it says in the fear of the Lord is a strong confidence. So if there's no fear there, then ain't no confidence. No faith with no faith. You can't please your how about you now shot. It is impossible. All right. Back at verse five. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. Wicked thoughts. Thoughts that ain't right. Okay. And will not abide 
when unrighteousness cometh in. OK, when I read that, it reminded me of the lesson I did, I think, like last week, abiding in the fear of the Lord. Right. OK, because if you abide in the fear, the wisdom is going to stay there because fear is the root of that wisdom. Right. OK, so but when you own bullshit and you're being consistent with the bullshit. OK, with darkness, it will not abide. Wisdom will not abide. It will flee because the roots are going. You catch that? All right. Let's go to James chapter one, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endured temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Right, man. OK, your kingdom seat, your seat forever in the kingdom, man. OK, it will be your seat forever. It will never change. That is amazing, man, to think about when you really lock into it, man. OK. It says he shall receive a crown of life, the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Right. OK. Man, think about that, man, forever, forever and forever, man. OK, so we have to be in the spirit of resisting pleasures and temptations. We have to be. And this is why. Let's go to James chapter four. Verse seven and eight. Submit yourselves, therefore, to Yahweh Basham Shai. Resist the devil. That's them wicked pleasures. OK, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And you got to believe that. OK, he will flee. You got to have faith. You can read that in um, Ephesians chapter six, the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts. OK, you got to have that shield of faith, man. And that's the spirit of belief and faith in Yahweh Basham was shy. That's that shield. That's that guidance. That's that protection. OK. Back at verse seven. Submit yourselves, therefore, to Yahweh Basham was shy. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh unto Yahweh Basham was shy and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, your minds, you double minded. You hear that? Draw nigh unto Yahweh Bashim Shai, and he will draw nigh unto you. Right. Okay. So back to those moments when you're feeling heavy with temptation and it's wicked and you know it's wicked, man. Those are the moments to man up. Those are the moments to get more spiritual, to grow. Those are the moments you take to flourish because you remember what the Lord told you. You remember the kingdom. You remember what's at stake. You remember how close we are. Don't let Satan get you with that wicked temporary temptation. OK, it's going to come. Then it's going to fly away. And then what? You feel like shit. You don't feel worthy enough at all. You know, which is a good thing to be contrite. Like you say, he is nine to the contract. OK, but. At the end of the day, man, it's about being more disciplined and fearing the Lord. OK, and understanding that we have been called to something great. So we must act better. We must do better. Seeing that these things shall be dissolved, that fire is coming. What manner of persons should you be knowing that you know the truth? OK, so an outward man is going to perish, but your inward man has to get more tighter, more disciplined, more closer to Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay, so this is just an exhortation to all you brothers out there and you few sisters, man. Discipline yourself, man. Discipline yourself. We almost out of here. So with that, I want to give our praises to Yahweh Bashim Shai, Bashim Raka Kodash for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Double honors to the elves of Great Millstone and Shalom to you, Akim, out there that's doing the truth and sincerity. Shalom.